Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gents. Have I got a good one for you? Welcome to Rodney's Publishing. Charles lived a life undisturbed. Oh, and hit that subscribe button if for more story. Routine was his comfort, predictability his friend. He woke, worked, ate, slept, rinse, repeat. A cog in the machine of his own making until the day the letter arrived. Cream paper, elegant script, a name from a past he thought buried Bethany. They'd been inseparable, a trio bound by childhood dreams and teenage rebellion, Bethany, Dave, and me. Then silence, years of it. The reunion, Bethany wrote, was to be at their old haunt, the abandoned quarry, a place of whispered secrets and reckless dares, six days hence. Charles stared at the date, a cold finger tracing his spine. He hadn't thought about that place, about them in years. Now the past was rising, demanding to be seen. I wasn't sure if I should go. This intrusion into my carefully ordered life was unwelcome, and yet a spark of curiosity flickered. Bethany, after all this time, what had become of her? What had become of us all? The quarry hadn't changed, still stood defiant against the passage of time. A jagged scar on the landscape, silent sentinel to countless childhood adventures. It had been their haven, their escape from the mundane. Now it felt alien, ominous. I wasn't the first to arrive. Dave's truck, a hulking testament to our shared love of all things mechanical, was parked haphazardly near the edge. I parked further down, a sense of unease settling over me. Dave hadn't aged well, Lines etched deep, eyes holding a perpetual shadow. He greeted me with a grunt, a flicker of the old camaraderie in his gaze. Bethany's late. Dave's voice was roughened by time and something else. Regret, pain. Charles couldn't tell. He simply nodded, unable to shake the feeling that something was wrong. Terribly wrong. Bethany never arrived. Hours crawled by, each tick of the clock amplifying the silence. Dave grew increasingly agitated, pacing like a caged animal. Charles tried calling her, but the calls went straight to voicemail. A gnawing anxiety began to coil in his gut. As dusk settled, casting long, eerie shadows across the quarry, we decided to leave. But as we turned to go, a sound drifted from the depths of the abandoned mine shaft. A low, mournful melody carried on the wind, faint yet undeniably clear. It was a sound that sent chills down their spines, a sound that spoke of sorrow and loss. They looked at each other, faces pale in the fading light, the same question in their eyes. What was that? The wind howled through the quarry, whipping their hair and clothes, but the mournful sound persisted. It was like a whisper from beyond, a ghostly lament that seemed to seep into their very bones. Fear, cold and sharp, pierced through my unease. Something was terribly wrong. The drive back was tense. Neither man spoke. The eerie melody from the quarry echoing in their ears. Charles couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched, that unseen eyes followed their every move. He found himself constantly checking his rearview mirror, searching for any sign of pursuit. When we reached the town, a sense of relief washed over me. The familiar streets, the sight of other people, it all felt reassuring after the isolation of the quarry. But the unease lingered, a dark undercurrent to my thoughts. Dave dropped him off at his apartment, their goodbye curt, their faces grim. As Charles watched Dave's truck disappear down the street, he couldn't shake the feeling that their reunion after all these years was only the beginning of something far more sinister. The next morning, the news hit Charles like a punch to the gut. Bethany was dead, found at the edge of the woods just outside of town. The details were scant, but the police suspected foul play. He felt a cold dread grip him. The reunion, the eerie song, Bethany's death, it was all too much of a coincidence. A terrible premonition settled over him. He knew with chilling certainty that Bethany's death was connected to their reunion at the quarry. The town was in shock. Bethany had been a beloved figure known for her kindness and infectious laugh. Now, her laughter was silenced, her vibrant spirit extinguished. Charles found himself drawn to the local diner, a place where he and his friends had spent countless hours during their youth. The diner was unusually quiet. The usual chatter and clatter of cutlery were replaced by a hushed murmur. Charles took a seat at the counter, the smell of stale coffee and frying bacon doing little to comfort him. 
He glanced at the newspaper lying on the counter, the headline screaming about Bethany's death. As he sat there, lost in his thoughts, a familiar melody drifted from the old jukebox in the corner. It was a gospel song, one that Bethany used to sing all the time. But instead of the uplifting message of faith and hope, the song now seemed to drip with an unsettling melancholy. It was as if the music itself was mourning Bethany's loss. The hairs on the back of Charles's neck stood on end. He glanced around the diner, but no one else seemed to notice the chilling dissonance of the song. It was as if he was the only one who could hear the sorrow, the fear woven into the fabric of the music. He couldn't shake the feeling of unease, the chilling premonition that something terrible was about to happen. He needed to talk to Dave, to see if he had noticed the strange occurrences too. Maybe together they could make sense of this nightmare. He found Dave at his workshop, surrounded by the familiar scent of oil and metal. Dave looked worse than he had at the quarry, his face drawn, his eyes bloodshot. He had that haunted look in his eyes, the look of someone who had stared into the abyss and seen something unspeakable. It's not a coincidence, is it? Charles asked, his voice barely a whisper. Dave just shook his head, a humorless laugh escaping his lips. She called me that night, Dave said, voice raspy with unshed tears. Said she saw something at the quarry, something evil. Five days. Five days had passed since the reunion. Five days since Bethany's life had been brutally cut short. Five days of fear, of unease, of the ever-present gospel song playing in Charles's mind. Five days left. The cryptic message, scrawled on the back of the letter summoning them to the quarry, echoed in his thoughts. Six days to see, six days to feel, six days until the end reveals. Each tick of the clock felt like a hammer blow driving him closer to what? He didn't know but he knew it was coming. He could feel it in his bones. The police investigation was at a standstill. No leads, no suspects. Just a small town left reeling, trying to make sense of the senseless. The fear was palpable, a living, breathing entity that hung heavy in the air. It was in the whispers exchanged in the supermarket aisles, in the hurried footsteps echoing on the sidewalks after dark. The air crackled with anticipation, or was it fear? The line blurred, indistinguishable in the oppressive atmosphere. It was the eve of the sixth day, the day the cryptic message had forewarned of. Sleep was a distant dream. Charles paced, a caged animal in his own apartment. The phone rang. Dave's voice, ragged, desperate. It's happening, Charles, it's happening. The line went dead. He didn't need to ask, didn't need to clarify, he knew. It was time, the quarry, the abandoned mine shaft, the source of the mournful song, the epicenter of the fear. He had to go back, the drive was a blur, thoughts jumbled, a chaotic mess mirroring the turmoil within him. He arrived to find Dave standing at the edge of the abyss, staring into the black moor of the mine shaft. His face was pale, etched with a terror that mirrored Charles's own. It was too late. Dave turned, eyes wide with a horrifying mix of fear and understanding. Words tumbled out, disjointed, desperate. It wasn't supposed to be like this, Charles. We were supposed to be safe, but it heard us. It listened. We woke it up. Before Charles could process, could demand an explanation, the earth shuddered. A low, guttural growl echoed from the mine shaft, the mournful melody twisting into a cacophony of pure primal terror. A force, unseen but undeniably powerful, erupted from the abyss. Dave screamed, a sound quickly swallowed by the consuming darkness. Charles watched, paralyzed, as his friend was dragged towards the gaping maw of the mine, his pleas for mercy swallowed by the echoing silence. Then silence. Deafening. Absolute. The air hung heavy, thick with the stench of fear, and something ancient, something evil. Charles stood on the precipice, staring into the abyss, the cryptic message, a chilling echo in his mind. Six days, six days until the end reveals. He was alone. If you like what I just read, pick my book up, Brain Boxing or Crime Artist, and leave room for human errors. My latest published 11-11-2023. See you on YouTube at Rodney's Publishing.